Christ An Sung Hong who came to give us the Tree of Life. With this sermon title, let us study the history of the Garden of Eden about the Tree of the Knowledge of Good and Evil and the Tree of Life. It is not too much to say that the 66 books of the Bible are veiled with a profound mystery. That is why it is written in Revelation chapter 22 that we should never add to or subtract anything from the Bible. In Revelation chapter 5, it is clearly written that unless the root of David comes, the Bible can never be unsealed. The Bible is not the study of men. For this reason, whom do we need in order to correctly understand what is hidden in the Bible? Who must come? God must come. We cannot have a correct understanding of the Bible without receiving teachings from God. Let me give you an example. A mother prayed to God day and night for her child to become a righteous person. While she was praying earnestly to God, unbeknownst to her, tears streamed down her face. Meanwhile, a drop of tear happened to fall into a small glass test tube. A teacher presented the glass test tube containing the mother's earnest tear and explained its significance to his students. Everyone, the glass test tube you see before you contains a mother's teardrop. Now, if we were to analyze the components of this teardrop, what elements might be inside it? He asked. He continued, from a physical perspective, tears are comprised of water and a minute amount of salts. However, don't you think that there is something else within it? The teacher asked the students again. Within this single teardrop lies the mother's earnest love for her child. Would you be able to extract that love by using any scientific tool? Can anyone extract it? The mother's yearning heart, earnest love, and dedication for her child are in that teardrop but it is impossible to extract them from it. As we think about this matter, today, let's carefully examine the profound will of God hidden within the Bible as parables. What efforts did God himself make for us by coming to this earth? No matter how many times they analyze the components of the teardrop, it is impossible to grasp the love and sacrifice within it. Yet, within that teardrop, numerous elements are infused. The mother's earnest heart is blended in it, along with the profound devotion and love for her child. This is something that cannot be extracted by any tools. Today, we must understand the devotion, sacrifice, and love of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother who came to this earth to give us the tree of life. We should realize, this is how much they have cherished and loved us. Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother save their children by carving out their flesh and shedding their blood. We must clearly recognize that such a great love is infused within the Bible. Today, regarding this matter, let us take a look at the words of the Bible. Let's look at the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 16. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 16, it is written, And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it you will certainly die. God said, you are free to eat from any tree in the Garden of Eden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will surely die. However, Adam and Eve were deceived by the serpent and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. As a result, they could no longer stay in the Garden of Eden and were cast out. Didn't such a pitiful situation happen? Let's move on to chapter 3. 
chapter 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say, You must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat from it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. In this way, Adam and Eve, who were deceived by Satan, ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and became mortal beings destined to die. As it is written in Romans chapter 7, What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Even if they repent and feel remorse for their actions, they have already violated God's law, making it impossible for them to return to their former life in the Garden of Eden. However, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not the only tree in the Garden of Eden. The tree of life was also there. Even if someone committed the sin of eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, as long as he could eat from the tree of life, wouldn't he be able to restore his former life? For this reason, God blocked the way so that sinners cannot go near the tree of life. Let's take a look at chapter 3 verse 22. Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat, and live forever. We need to take a look at the characteristics of these two trees. God created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as a tree that leads those who eat of it to death. What about the tree of life? God created it as a tree that leads those who eat of it to eternal life. Let's continue with verse 23. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the Tree of Life. Although Adam and Eve wanted to approach the Tree of Life, who was there? What were the cherubim doing? At God's command, they held flaming swords flashing back and forth and guarded the way to the tree of life so that no one could go near it. If mankind could eat from the tree of life mentioned in the Garden of Eden, they would be able to break free from the sin that have been passed down from Adam and Eve. Isn't Adam's original sin still being inherited and passed down to all mankind today? In order to take away the original sin, all mankind must eat from the tree of life. You may have various concerns and worries. As for students, they need to study and compete with their peers in exams to be at the top. As for workers, they worry, how can I avoid being fired from my job, while also being mindful of their boss? If you are the CEO of a company, you would be concerned, thinking, how can I operate the company effectively to produce good profits that benefit the company? In this way, everyone here is likely contemplating various issues. However, even though we were cast down to this earth and lost everything, 
there is one thing that we must seek and take with us, the tree of life. It is of utmost importance. We must never lose this. When God awakens us to the matter of the original sin through the history of the Garden of Eden, we must find the answer to this matter. This is the very reason for our existence on this earth. Since people don't know this, they are preoccupied with thoughts like, how can I make a lot of money today? How can I become better than others? They are in such a tense and anxious state. This is truly unfortunate. As it is written in Genesis, since the beginning of sin can be attributed to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then, the tree of life becomes a precious key that helps resolve all issues of sin. Therefore, it is written in the Bible, this is what God promised us. What is this? It is eternal life. What is the characteristic of the tree of life? It leads those who eat of it to eternal life. Think about the promise that God has given us. It is none other than bestowing upon us eternal life. In other words, what will God grant us? Think about the history of the Garden of Eden. Ultimately, eternal life cannot be given to us without the tree of life. Isn't that the reason why God promised us eternal life? When it comes to our faith, there may be various kinds of faith, but without restoring the tree of life which is the most fundamental, even a hundred years of a life of faith will be in vain and meaningless. This is because without it, no one can be freed from sin. Then, what is the reality of the tree of life that has been hidden? Let's find out about the reality of the tree of life. Let's turn to the book of John chapter 6. Let's see verse 53. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no, what will you not have? Life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has. What does he have? Eternal life. Here, we need to pay attention to the term, eternal life. There is no other way for mankind to obtain eternal life except through the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. Yet, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus came to this earth, taking pity on mankind, what teaching did he preach? He said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has. What does he have? Eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. In the Garden of Eden, God said that whoever eats from the tree of life can receive eternal life. And in John chapter 6, Jesus said that whoever eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood has eternal life. Through this mated verse in the New Testament, we can understand the reality of the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. What do Jesus' flesh and his blood represent in the Garden of Eden? If we examine the problem closely, we can find the answer within it. Don't people often say that where there is a problem, there is a solution? The solution to the problem of sin can be found in the Garden of Eden. Since it is written that in the Garden of Eden, there is no other way to eternal life than the tree of life, what do Jesus' flesh and blood represent in the Garden of Eden? we can confirm that Jesus' flesh and blood represent the tree of life. The Old Testament is a shadow, and the New Testament is the reality. The tree of life in the Garden of Eden is a shadow. What is the reality of the tree of life? Christ promises to give eternal life to all mankind through his precious flesh and blood, which is the reality of the tree of life. Then, 
How can we partake of Jesus' flesh and blood? If this is misunderstood, persecution like that of the early church may occur. In the time of the early church, when many Gentiles persecuted and inflicted intense torture upon Christians, they accused them, saying, Christians consume human flesh. They are an extremely malicious organization. They branded Christians with such evil rumors and dragged them all around the Colosseum, making them food for lions and human candlesticks. In this way, they stigmatized Christians as heretics and exterminated them. Jesus said, Whoever eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drinks his blood has eternal life. This teaching was kept and handed down in the early church. How, then, can we eat Christ's flesh and drink his blood? Let's turn to the book of Matthew chapter 26. In Matthew chapter 26 verse 17, it is written, On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared. What did they prepare? The Passover. What is the connection between the tree of life, Jesus' flesh and blood, and the Passover that we are now examining in this passage of the Bible? Let's find the answer in verse 26. Verse 26. While they were eating, while they were keeping the Passover, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is. What is it? My body. He bestowed such significance upon the Passover bread as his holy body. Verse 27. Then he took a cup. The Passover wine is in the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, What did Jesus command them to do? Drink from it, all of you. This is. Whose blood is it? My blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us examine the verses in John chapter 6 and Matthew chapter 26 as mated verses. Jesus said, Whoever eats the flesh of the Son of Man and drinks his blood has eternal life. As we have just read, the Passover bread and wine represent his flesh and blood. Therefore, what can we say about those who participate in the Holy Supper of the Passover? They are those who eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood. Thus, they can partake of Jesus' promise to give eternal life. In other words, the Passover is the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. Nowadays, in the global village, there are countless churches like the sand on the seashore, but they do not observe the Passover. The fact that they do not keep the Passover indicates that they do not have the tree of life. The fact that they do not have the tree of life proves that they are still under the control of sin. Isn't the Passover the truth that rescues us from the power of sin and death and also from the power of the darkness? Doesn't the Passover open us the way to life and allow us to obtain eternal life? Therefore, what do humans need the most? It is not material possessions, or academic knowledge, or any form of applause, or admiration from people. No one can enter the kingdom of heaven with any of these things. Isn't the kingdom of heaven the place we can enter with the truth of the tree of life? This is why God came to this earth and established the regulation of the truth, the Passover. Furthermore, he even elevated it as the new covenant. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 22 verse 7. Let's take a look at chapter 22 verse 7. 
Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Let's move on to verse 13. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired. What has Jesus eagerly desired to do? To eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Can you understand why Jesus eagerly desired to eat this Passover with his disciples? It is because without the Passover, there is no solution for the sins of mankind. The most important key for us to enter the kingdom of heaven is within this truth of the Passover. That is why Jesus said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. Only then, can the way to the tree of life, which had been blocked, finally be opened. Let's see the scene of keeping the Passover. It is the same as what we read in the Gospel of Matthew. Let's move on to verse 19. Verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Jesus said that the Passover bread is his body. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper he took the cup. The Passover wine is in the cup, saying, This cup is. What is this cup? The new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. The Passover is the truth of the new covenant. Through the new covenant, we can receive the forgiveness of sins. Through the new covenant, Christ plays the role of the mediator between God and us. He forgives all our sins and will remember our sins no more. He also grants us the heavenly inheritance, the kingdom of heaven which we had lost. For all these reasons, he brought us the Passover, the truth of the tree of life. Then, can just anyone bring the Passover, the truth of the tree of life? When we examine what is written in Genesis, we can find that God has placed cherubim to block the way to the tree of life, preventing sinners from approaching it. It cannot be approached by just anyone. Then, who can open this way? The answer becomes clear when we carefully consider who ordered the cherubim to block the way to the tree of life. Who blocked the way? It was God who blocked it. Hence, will the way that had been blocked by God's command be opened if a president comes and says, open the way? Who is the only one in the entire universe that can open this way? It is only God. God must come and open the way for us. That is why Jesus Christ, God who came to this earth in the flesh, opened the way at his first coming. He has embedded the entire way of truth to the tree of life into the new covenant Passover. However, something unfortunate happened. After Jesus ascended to heaven, the church kept the Passover without any problem for about 100 years. But around AD 155, conflicts arose about the Passover. At that time, the church was divided into two groups, the Eastern Church and the Western Church. We can find this in church history. Polycarp was the representative of the Eastern Church. He said, we do not want to keep the Passover on any other day than the 14th day of Nisan. This is what Jesus Christ did, and all the apostles also kept the Passover on the 14th day of Nisan. It is nonsense to keep the Passover on a Sunday other than this date. In AD 155, the first controversy arose between Anicetus in the Western Church and Polycarp in the Eastern Church, but they could not reach an agreement. Then, around AD 197, the second attempt to abolish the Passover began. Pope Victor declared, the Passover must now be observed on Sunday, and compelled others to observe it on Sunday. In response, Polycrates in the Eastern Church greatly protested against him. 
As the eighth bishop, I've never seen the predecessors observe the Passover on any other day than the 14th day of Nisan. This is all recorded in church history. He said, that is something I've never seen before. What ridiculous nonsense are you talking about? We absolutely cannot tolerate that. There was a second controversy around AD 197, but the attempt was once again unsuccessful. However, in AD 325, the Passover, the truth of the tree of life, was abolished. The greatest gift that Jesus Christ gave to mankind was abolished. Since mankind is destined to die by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what they need is the tree of life. What they need is not money, or any kind of education, or fame, or power. However, there were persistent efforts and attempts to abolish the truth of the tree of life. The Passover, in 155, 197, and 325. In the end, the Roman Emperor Constantine gathered all the bishops, that is, pastors in modern terms, from both the Eastern churches and Western churches. And with his authority as emperor, he abolished the Passover at the Council of Nicaea in AD 325. The abolition of the Passover signifies the absence of hope for mankind. For mankind who sinned in heaven and were cast down to this earth, the most essential element is the Passover of the new covenant that Jesus granted mankind as a gift. Yet, they forbid people from keeping it, imprisoning those who do and treating them as sinners. Over a long period of 1,600 years, not observing the Passover has persisted up to the present day. People regarded it as very natural. However, what is the purpose of God's coming to this earth? Why does he come to this earth? He comes to save mankind. He will appear a second time to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. When he comes a second time, he should not come empty-handed. What should he bring? He should bring the tree of life in the Garden of Eden to redeem mankind from their sins. Therefore, when he comes to this earth a second time, he must bring the Passover, the truth of the tree of life. These are not my own words or opinions. These are the teachings written in the Bible and what Christ An Sang Hong taught us. Today, churches in the world say that the Passover is unnecessary, but in fact, it is absolutely essential for those who want to be saved and enter the kingdom of heaven. Let's see Isaiah chapter 25 verse 6. On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and what else will be prepared? The finest of wines. What kind of wine is it? How long has it been stored? It has been stored for over 1,600 years. God will prepare a banquet of aged wine, and he will swallow up death forever. Throughout the 66 books of the Bible, which wine has the promise of eliminating death? It is when Jesus Christ established the new covenant, saying, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. To put it differently, what does it mean when God said, I will swallow up death forever? This means that he will give us eternal life. Truly, the Passover is an immensely precious gift for mankind. Those who want to go to the kingdom of heaven must undoubtedly reside within this truth. Let's take a look at chapter 25 once again. On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. It is written that God will swallow up death with wine. This refers to the Passover wine. We are already very well aware that only the Passover wine has such a promise. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. 
He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Who is hosting this banquet where death is eternally swallowed up with aged wine? Who is he? Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. Everyone, who has granted us the new covenant Passover? Who has brought us the spiritual tree of life? Christ An Sang Hong and New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother have brought it for us, haven't they? The Bible clearly records, Surely this is our God. We trusted in Him, and He saved us. We must not depend on anything else for our salvation. The most crucial thing for mankind is the tree of life. Only God can bring the tree of life to mankind. I give eternal thanks, glory, and praise to Christ An Sang Hong and New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother for opening the way of eternal life and salvation through the New Covenant Passover and leading us into the truth of the New Covenant Passover, the spiritual tree of life. The one who comes to this earth with the truth of the New Covenant Passover is the Christ who is to appear a second time for the salvation of mankind. He will redeem us from our sins. Please confirm this once again through the prophecies of the Bible. Wherever Christ An Sang Hong leads us and wherever Heavenly Mother leads us, we should never fail to follow them until the end with obedience. Only the Church of God has the Tree of Life. Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother have called us into the truth and allowed us to know the truth of the New Covenant Passover. Let us express our deep gratitude, honor, and praises to them during this joyful Sabbath day. Having such joy in our heart, let us live our lives with bright hope for the future. By this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.